My name is Brian Horton. I'm game director on Rise of the Tomb Raider. So in the Tomb Raider reboot, you nailed all the mechanics and stuff. What was your main goal with Rise of the Tomb Raider? Our goal for Rise of the Tomb Raider is to make Lara take her next step in her evolution on becoming the Tomb Raider. That meant seeking out these lost secrets in the most furthest reaches of our world, these hostile landscapes. By doing so, hoping to find a new ingredient, something that's going to be truly special that she can understand some of the parent, you know, supernatural ingredients that she saw in the last game. In addition, mechanically, we're trying to make a large game, something that's in our exploration spaces three times larger and with more things to do. The player's going to be able to upgrade their character to craft Lara Croft in the preference that they prefer. Let's talk tombs. One of the biggest criticisms with the reboot was the lack of tombs. You've gone quite a fair distance to fixing that with Rise of the Tomb Raider. Can you just talk a bit more about what you've done tombs-wise? So our, we're investing in tombs, absolutely. The, the hope was to make them larger, ancient spaces that the player feels that nostalgic feeling of what it's like to be a Tomb Raider. We're also incorporating what we call the nested puzzle approach, where we have multiple small puzzles that all work up into one large result. So um, in the Syria level, which is our prologue, Lara gets to go into what we believe is one of the more classic expressions of a tomb. We've also introduced new mechanics like translation system, where Lara will be able to decipher new languages like Greek in the Syrian tomb, and that will allow her to find new uh, uh, caches that she'll be able to discover even more in the game. So in terms of like balance and that, what kind of percentage-wise are we looking at tombs in the game? So tombs are roughly in that third space of a third of the game is, is, is filled with tombs. And that a lot of those are what we call challenge tombs. And they're dispersed all throughout our exploration spaces. And as you're ex exploring the world, you're going to be happening upon these tombs. Not only are the challenge tombs bigger, they're, they, have a, they have a higher degree of difficulty. In addition to tombs, we've also introduced crypts and caves. Those are exploration spaces without puzzles, but you'll be able to unlock more story and find more things that the player will be able to use to upgrade her, uh, her skills and ultimately her weapons and abilities. It seems to be, in the couple of hours we've had with the game, there seems to be a lot of blocking areas, off and paths off, until you've got the, the right tools. Was that your aim, to get people to go back and re-explore the area? Yeah, we really want the player to feel that there are many things to do when they first enter a space, but there are going to be some spaces that are going to be harder to access and require some kind of gear. Lara will progress her gear all throughout the story, and as she does and she re-enters that space, she'll be able to discover new things, including challenge tombs, that will really unlock the world. We want every time you come through a space to feel like there's something new to discover. One of the big mechanics in the reboot was your kind of manipulation of fire. It seems that this one you've done a lot with water as well. Um, is that kind of, is that fair to say, or is, is there still the big fire puzzles in this as well, like you did with the original? Our, our goal for puzzles is always to try to ground them in some sense of reality, whether it's uh, counterweight or fire, or in this case, water. What's great about water, it has so many different properties that, you know, you, you can channel it, you can raise it, it's got buoyancy to it, so it really works well within our physics-based model. But yeah, in Syria, we've, we've uh, used that as, a, as the starting point of the mechanics that the player will be able to learn about how water works and how you can, in this case, raise the water to get access to the Prophet's sarcophagus. So I remember the Tomb Raiders of yesteryear, really tricky puzzles. Is that what you've gone for with Rise of the Tomb Raider and your puzzles? Are they more accessible? We call uh, our puzzle model nested. It's our nested puzzle approach. And what that means is there's a number of smaller puzzles that you have to solve to get to the ultimate goal. Now, as far as challenge goes, we've introduced we introduce our mechanics at the beginning, which are very, very simple. Uh, these we call our puzzle nuggets. So you understand the principles. And then as we go, we slowly ratchet up the challenge. So as you're progressing, you feel like you're really learning. Uh, when you get to the challenge tombs, those are really where the puzzles become a lot trickier. They're not on the core path, but for the player that does finish those puzzles, they're going to get a fantastic reward at the end, which is going to allow the player to upgrade their abilities in very unique ways. So while they're not uh, required, you're going to find a lot more tombs in the core path and on exploration. Yeah, when we were doing the exploration in the glacial caverns, the, the optional puzzle tomb there is the big ship. 
in the wall seems to be more iconic than all the optional puzzles that you did in the previous Tomb Raider. Was that your kind of goal to make them these big iconic things? Every single challenge tomb in Rise of the Tomb Raider has a story to tell, has a, has a landmark, something you can look at and go, I know where I am. It has a real sense of place. So the, the, the ship that's embedded in, in the glacier ice is an, a fantastic example of really trying to tell them this environmental story. And as you solve the puzzle and you start to read the journals, you understand that there was a journey that got the, the boat there. And you have a, a, a greater appreciation for it. So yes, I would say our goal for tombs this time is every single one has to tell a story and have some kind of visual spectacle to it. And you were talking briefly about the, uh, the, cool, the kind of decipher model that you've got. Can you talk a little bit more about that and where that came from? So in language translation, we wanted to be able to come up with a system that allowed that archaeologist in Lara Croft to come forward. So we came up with this idea that as you read journals and you look at murals, you'll be able to gain experience and that's going to feed into the language upgrade. Once you've upgraded your language, you'll be able to translate a monolith. That monolith will give you coordinates to find more things throughout the world. So it's a, it's a really nice thing to try to put some, some some tooth behind the fact that she is an archaeologist and loves these discoveries. And then throughout the game, you'll be unlocking greater s skill levels of each language. And there's multiple languages throughout the entire game. You seem to like throwing Lara around a lot recently, especially in the last two games. It's apparent in this one as well. But in the, the reboot, if she was just falling over, she was getting battered around, it's the same with this. Is, is there a reason for that? Is that kind of her, her building her up to be this big Tomb Raider? Is, well, if these tombs were easy to find, anyone could do it. So Lara Croft is uniquely qualified, both in her skills and her determination. And yeah, the challenges are there where the world is going to throw a curveball at her and she's going to have to battle her way through it. And that, in the sense, she earns her way to, to gain access to these tombs. It's not an easy path and it's one that she chooses. I think that's the big distinction between this game and the last is her proactive nature, her willingness to want to go and face these dangers to d make these amazing discoveries. In this case, find the lost city of Katesh. Oddly, one of my highlights of the, the last game was the, um, the brutal death sequences that you've done. Uh, are they back for Rise of the Tomb Raider? Well, we always say, you know, there's, there's no, you can't really have a challenge without a consequence. So if Lara is going to go into these trap ridden tombs and the player fails to perform the, the activity, there are going to be consequences. So yes, to answer your question, they're back. We always try to put them in context. So in, in case of, of a Tomb Raider game, just know that the world is going to be extremely dangerous. And we, we try to at least introduce these mechanics in a way that are not lethal at first. So when you do come across them and die, you feel, oh, I probably should have performed that better. So yes, they're there in, as a deterrent as much as a consequence for failure. You say deterrent, but when I was playing the original, and I found it a little bit when I was playing the demo today, I found myself trying to kill her just to see the death animations, is that something that plagues on your mind when you're doing the development? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, we find that the, the idea of the fantasy of being a Tomb Raider, people love to embrace the danger of what it means to, to go to these lethal spaces. And if, if there is some sense of like, oh wow, that was really brutal, and there, there's a, a little bit of a of a surge of excitement from that, what you are, you're engaged in the story, you're engaged in the characters. And I think ultimately that's what we want to try to do is keep players engaged in the action and make them believe that the world that they're in is real. So I noticed there was uh, something called ancient abilities. I think I got one when I was doing the, the ship mm -hmm. in the, the cavern. Is that, some, is that kind of your way to encourage people to go out off the beaten path and do these tombs? Yeah, we, we really want to feel that any time you've taken time, to go off the beaten path, that the discovery you, 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 you know, achieve, it has value and worth. And these ancient abilities, these, um, these, these books that have the information, are once again another element that feeds into Lara's archeological discovery. And they help also on the flip side, the player's ability to go th through these challenges. So the reward is absolutely there and, and they're having, having a story around them really puts that reward into context. So Rise of the Tomb Raiders out November 13th in all of Europe and November 10th in the U.S. Hope you guys enjoy it.